Hi and welcome to this new video yet again about the P8 smartwatch. I have good news. I finally released the source code for the Arduino firmware I wrote and I want to show you today how to go from a complete stock watch to uploading your own Arduino code to the watch and what you may encounter for problems or where you should look out for. And I will start by reflashing a stock firmware to the correct bootloader. Then I will show you how to install or open the Arduino IDE and then how to compile and flash it to your watch. Here is the current status of the Arduino firmware. You have for once the home screen where you see if the Bluetooth connection is um, on, the battery status, the last heart rate, the last steps and the last notification you received. And of course the time. It now has a feature that it will measure the heart rate every 15 minutes or every yeah, full hour and the 15 minutes after and so on. So in 30 seconds we will see that the heart rate sensor is blinking. To the battery I am now at 65% and I had weared, I weared one of the watches straight without recharging for 92 hours now and it was now empty. So that's a pretty good runtime with about 4 days without charging and yeah we now can see here the heart rate sensor and if I hold my finger onto it we should see the value changing in a few seconds when it recognized a new heart rate or a good heart rate. This is done via the library included in the Arduino IDE so we can now see that the new heart rate got measured and it will measure it five times and then it will turn off the heart rate sensor to save power again and will measure again in 15 minutes. So it, yeah, you can use that value in a graph for later. Also, we still have this kind of menu here where we yeah, have for once the last notification. We have the heart rate menu itself. We have a debug menu where we can just see the runtime. This one is now running for 9 hours or 575 minutes. We have the animation screen just for demo purpose where we can change the speed of the animation and it is running quite fast without any flicker also like that then we have yeah we can reboot the watch if I click yes the time will get reset as it yeah don't have any external RTC we have a non-used settings menu here it doesn't do anything right now and we have an info screen where we can yeah for once see my info and also when it was compiled and you could also put a version number there then we have just blank battery symbols where we can yeah just create our own menus and put them there That's for the firmware, what it does right now. And here I'm having now a complete stock firmware. Like that. And I want to show you how to get from there to the Arduino firmware in a few minutes. So this one looks a bit crazy because the images that it would load would be from the external flash which is cleared and look like that. Okay, to reflash it 
I have the Darflasher app here and I need to select the right watch. I know that is, it is the P8A here. I click on it. It will try to connect to the watch. And after it is connected, you can see here it has found a DAFIT tracker. I select to open the files and you can get the files from GitHub from my mm. other repository and you will use the DAFIT bootloader hacked. That is the one where you can go from the stock firmware to the custom bootloader for soft device version 5. And it will yeah, start the upload right now. This one is quite fast because it uses a custom bootloader. You can also see here I have connected a multimeter to it. And if I turn it on, you should be able to see how much current it draws. Right now it is at 3 milliampere. And yeah, the upload is done right now. And it should boot into the application where it will reflash the bootloader to the soft device 5.0 one. We can already go back here and wait for the new device to show up as it should do now. Here we have the ATC D view. There it will again reconnect to the Nordic bootloader and it has also found it there. And I now need to select the um, other bootloader where we go from the soft device 5.0 to the soft device 2.0 to make it Arduino compatible. And there I choose the fit bootloader DFU 2.0, which you can also find in the repository. This one takes a bit longer, but thanks to Varnosh, it is already faster than it was before. It's now at 2.5 kilobytes a second, and that was at around 0.8 kilobyte. But thanks to Varnosh, he is the guy that makes much. As Pruino tinkering with this watches or with many other watches too. Please look around on his GitHub. I will link it down in the description. And that is really going faster than I remember with the slower speed. You can find the Dar Flasher in the Play Store. You can download it for free. And it now should be restarting in a second, as you can see now. And here it now has one red rectangle. This is the soft device 2.0 bootloader and we can select the bootloader yet again and it will connect to it too. And we can see here that it found Again, a Nordic bootloader, but this time not a secure bootloader because the soft device 2.0 doesn't have a secure update mode. So we can select now the ATC watch code, or I will just as an example choose the P8 test menu where it will now to send it to the watch, and that will also take a bit of time because it's quite big with 320 kilobytes but it should start in a moment if the download or the upload doesn't start sometimes you can try to just reselect the file you can also try to reboot the phone the app will now enable and disable Bluetooth on its own to make it more stable. But it can of course occur that it doesn't work right away. So you may have to restart the app or restart the phone just to make it work. That's a problem with Android that the Bluetooth low energy module isn't the perfect one. I would call. 
The Soft Device 2.0 upload is a bit faster than the Soft Device 5.0 update. This uh, is also a reason why I choose that bootloader the other, not only because the Arduino IDE. It's yeah, just simpler to manage, even if it's not that secure, but the attack vector isn't that big with the Bluetooth low energy range. Okay, the upload is now done and you see that the firmware is now on the watch and we have the same as I showed on the other watch. So that can go away and we can now also see the power consumption of that firmware. I will try to show it as good as I can. Like um, that. We see uh, when the screen is on we have about 26 milliampere with um, half the screen brightness. This can also be changed. I think it was in settings. Yeah. With complete brightness we have about 50, 46 milliampere and with the lowest brightness we have about 21 milliampere or 20, uh, 70 milliampere. And if we now wait for the screen to turn off, we see that we have about 180, it will show a bit different here. So it's between 100 and um, 300 microamperes that is yeah if we connect to the Bluetooth low energy it is more because the device needs to handle more stuff but this is now also with the um, heart rate timer on so it will uh, read the heart rate every now and then and yeah the step counting is enabled with it and so on. If we now turn the device completely off, like that, we have around 50 microampere on current draw and we can wake the device up by either putting it on the charging cradle or by pushing the button shortly on the side. It will then reboot. If we look into the back, we can see where I soldered the SVD connection to the watch. This is needed to upload the code via an ST link. This is way faster than via BLE and you can recover the watch if you flashed a code that isn't working very well, where you may bricked the watch. You have here the four pins. there and this is for once the ground connection the 3.3 volt connection the clock and the data connection for the svd connection here as you may can see there on the connector so you have the svdeo that's the data you have the ground and you have the clock and the 3.3 or 5 volt I have connected it, the 5 volt to the charging points and uh, the ground connection also. This made it simpler to solder onto it. And then as you saw here I have the battery disconnected and over the multimeter to see what it will draw. Okay, now let's go on to the Arduino software and see how to create your own and I will explain a bit how it does work, what you need to yeah, look out for. Okay, we are now at the PC and I want to show you how to get started from start to finish. So for once with the Arduino software and also with the flashing files for the bootloader and so on. So we will start with the bootloader files. You can go to my GitHub and I will link it down in the description. You can 
go to dar flasher files there you have the hacked bootloader file and the foot bootloader also and you have also a few test samples or test files to select just to flash it and see if it works like it should here you also have the app linked in the play store you can download it on your phone and also another menu where I just show the same again. You can also of course update to another bootloader. You just need to make sure that it is at the address showed here. That way it should work. Then we can go back to the Arduino files which are here and a short manual is already here where you just need to download this file and if I click on it I will save it to the desktop it should download it and yeah the rest is again explanation about the DAR flasher files and also the D6 notification app which you can also download from the Play Store. You now need to also download the ATC watch files. You can simply click on yeah, clone or download and download zip. Save it also to the desktop. Now we have these two files here we can extract. It's for once the Arduino IDE and the yeah, firmware itself and that should be done in a moment okay to start now we can open the d6 arduino folder and open the arduino.exe where we have the yeah main arduino screen we can there now click on open navigate to the ATC watch firmware and open the ATC watch.ino file so if I open that now we already have the firmware here and all the files used to yeah make it work we see here on the bottom that the Darfitch watch is already selected if it is not we can go to board or to tools and board and select the Darfit watch that way we have the correct pinout for the i squared c and um, the spi port but that's just yeah the correct one to select if you want to flash any Darfit watch if your watch is connected via an ST link, you can also click on Tools, select the programmer ST Link version 2, and then click on um, where you want to go. If you only want to, s to flash a soft device, or if you want to flash the bootloader also, you need to select to back to stock firmware. And then you can click on Burn Bootloader and because I don't have the ST link connected right now, it is throwing that error at me. I will simply connect the ST link right now. So we can see it in action. So the ST link is now connected with the P8 watch I showed earlier and we can click on burn bootloader and it doesn't work. So the P8 watch is now connected and we can click on burn bootloader and it should start it right away. This sometimes fails. The reason 
is unknown to me, but you can just restart the burning process again or the flashing like that. This looks already better. It seems like it cannot get the CPU to halt because it is in some kind of sleep mode or anything like that. It will then show that the bootloader was flashed like it should and the watch is now turning on already next to me. That's for that. Now you could also use the D6 flasher again when you have selected the back to stock firmware because it has the bootloader included. Now we get to the hard part or the boring part maybe where I will go through a bit of the code. I will not show everything, you can look into it on your own. So the main file is for once including all the other files that are needed. We have here the setup, the standard Arduino setup which is called once on boot up where we for once wait just 500 milliseconds that is because of um, if you have the watch turned off completely we are the shutdown command and you push the button to start it up it will check here if the button is pressed and if so it will go to the bootloader so to prevent going directly into the bootloader if you wake it up via the button I made this 500 milliseconds delay here so it will yeah, not go into bootloader you need to push it shortly otherwise it will directly go into the bootloader this is a secure feature so if something after that will break the watch so that it will go into an endless loop or anything like that it is possible to prevent that by pressing the button on startup if it is bricked somehow after that it will initialize all this stuff here i will go through a bit of it the init watchdog is enabling the watchdog timer for about five seconds and we can go here to see what it is doing so it will call this function and it will enable the watchdog with 500 milliseconds timeout which it will do here and if mm, the watchdog feed isn't called in 500 milli uh, 5000 milliseconds it will reboot the device this is again a security feature so if something is blocking the main loop here or I will go to it right now if you press the button for more than five seconds if something else is broken here it will not feed the watchdog as you can see here and it will then reboot again and if you hold the button it, it will go into the bootloader mode so you can recover the watch from a broken state this is all meant to be for a closed watch you update it via over the air updates if you have the ST link connected you can of course just reflash the new firmware this is just yeah for a closed watch so that is that then it will initialize the RTC2 this is in the file sleep here on the bottom where it will initialize the RTC to a 40 milliseconds timer where it will call this function this interrupt in every 40 milliseconds so for once it will um, turn off the vibration motor or the LED on the back side if it is meant to do so it will enable the shot flag and it will also read the heart rate sensor if the 15 minutes timer is over 
the shot timer is here is used to read the current acceleration data to turn on the screen this is kind of a software interrupt if you look onto your watch it will turn on the screen after that it will initialize some task but the task file is empty for now it will here also initialize the bootloader we will have it here but there is also nothing in there right now there's just nothing needed to initialize it will yeah initialize the spi port this is used for the flash and the display and you can see it um, where is it here there it will set the correct input and output pins or in this case yeah one one input pin and the other ones are all outputs it will start the um, SPI master 2 port with 80, uh, 8 megahertz and without any interrupt enabled and this file is then used to send the data via DMA to the SPI port to the display or the external flash we also initialize the input output ports that is for example the button the hardware button and also the LED and the vibrator and then we have some other functions to turn on the motor or the LED or to get the current status of the button this now goes on and on mostly these files are named so you can find them easily so for example init backlight is in the file backlight which we have here and so on at the last step or we have here one time displaying the booting message and at the last step it will go to the home screen where it will go to the menu file it's here where we have the menu and the yeah stuff around the menu we have here the display home function where it will set the current screen to the home screen to display it next then comes the main loop here it will yeah for once feed the bluetooth the bluetooth low energy stuff which is in the ble file where we can also see where it initializes the bluetooth stuff for one uh, TX and RX characteristics, the name of it, the advertising interval. It will enable some um, interrupt, which we have here. So it will, if some device is connected to the watch, it will yeah, wake up and it will also set the Boolean that the Bluetooth connection is yeah, active to true or to felt. Here it will also handle the writing from the D6 notification app or any other app of course and it will also pass the commands and here you can also add new commands you want to pass. It will for example pass the display contrast or the backlight here if the um, contrast is set to 100 then the backlight is set to 1 if the contrast is at yeah 175 it will set it to 3 and so on so here you can yeah add new commands to pass for your own needs then the watchdog feed we had already it will here see if the current state is sleeping if so it will go into this function where it will just put itself into the deepest sleep possible then if we are not sleeping it will go into this section where it for once check if it needs to go to sleep so it will turn off the display and other stuff it will display the screen so there it will show 
stuff on the display and we can go again into the menu it's this function here where it will check if the last screen time is already reached and the screen time is checked here via the get menu delay time and now I need to search it, it's here it will take the refresh time from the current screen and if we go to the class we can see here that the refresh time is by default set to the default uh, refresh time which is 40 milliseconds but if we have a menu that wants to change it it can select its own values it's for example in the animation file where it will set the refresh time to 1 and that way we have a 1 milliseconds refresh time there it's uh, not possible to achieve this but it tries to and this will override the values from the class you see here so this is also true for the sleep time you can see here the default sleep time is 10, 10 seconds but if for example the heart rate set a different value there here is it 50 seconds then it will yeah turn the display off after 50 seconds and not 5 seconds or 10 seconds sorry <laughs> it will also check the battery status this is done in the battery file here and if the battery is under 15% it will just display a message that the battery is empty this is just a placeholder for later to turn the system completely off as you can see here but that isn't correctly working for now that is still in development this is used to prevent draining the battery completely and more to yeah save the time so it will run the time better okay the next part is the get timed interrupt this is the shot um, flag I showed in the RTC uh, function it will there check again if we are sleeping and if so it will read the acceleration data and see if we are looking onto the watch so it should turn on the display it will get the current time to um, check for a new day and if the hours are at zero at so at midnight it will reset the steps right now so you have then zero steps on the next day it doesn't save the current steps anywhere this should be done it's yeah a future feature for for then it will here also check the heart rate measurements that it will do every 15 mi minutes and also it will check the interrupt flags they will set in the interrupt file where it yeah will for once initialize the interrupt it will have the interrupt handler here and will set the flags for the interrupts as you can see here and we get here we are the gets interrupt flags and there it will just check if any hardware has yeah fired the interrupt flag and it will then do the equi equivalent function you can see here on the bottom that's for the main loop I want to talk a little bit about the menu itself because that is yeah the um, hardest to understand part I would call so we have for once here on the top every existing menu that we want to show 
and we also include all these menu files and if we take a look for example in the home menu we can see it creates a class and that is created from the screen class and if we go to class screen we can see here that the screen class is created from the screen class which is then again here where you have these main functions the pre function the main the post and the swipe functions or the click or long click functions for the touch screen the pre function will run once before the menu is shown and the main function is the function that gets called by the timer for the display the post function again is called after the um, menu is shown and I will show it here in the heart rate example so in the pre function it will start the heart rate sensor it will clear the screen it will display the heart rate and the last head heart rate plus the heart rate symbol on the screen and in the main function it will simply here yeah, make the values that are changing to the new values this time we save to redraw this section every time we call the heart rate screen in the post function it will here just yeah end the heart rate sensor so it will not measure any more and this way is every screen built up you see that you need to if you want to create an own menu you need to for once create this whole file you need to select a new name for that screen so you can theoretically copy this whole file into a new file change these two names to your own change what you will do inside of it and then you can go to the menu add the new screen here and then you can also add it to the app drawer where you can create another app I would call it you can give it a name you can give it a symbol where what well what I will show later and you say which screen is it from the ones here on the top then we have the app screen also where we have the three app drawers you saw in the firmware and here you can input your new app so for example here we have the battery app three times as a placeholder here you can simply enter your new app you created here and it will sh then show the correct name the correct symbol and if you press on that menu it will go into that screen so that one is quite simple if you want to create a complete new app drawer you can do so by putting a new one here so apps for screen for example you need to increase the max menu value here to 4 if you have here one additional and then if you swipe up or swipe down it will already show that new menu here you don't need to make an app screen there you can also just put your screen directly into it like the home screen so if you want a fourth menu or a fourth app that will show yeah here the other stuff is for once the yeah showing of the different menus and also here it will yeah, check the touch input for once if you swipe up down left right or if you click onto it then it will send the touch data with it because of the x and y data or if you long hold your finger on the screen it will then yeah, send the long click 
and yeah the other stuff is just for the swipe handling the menu increasing and so on we can also see in the um, class that if these functions are empty they will just don't do anything they will get called but there's just nothing in there if we look into the class screen we can see that if you swipe right right it will always go to the last menu but even that function you could reset in your own menu to do to you to do your own stuff so it will yeah not be fixed to that action and yeah so far that is all i had to say you can go through all the files if you now want to upload it or compile it you can click for once on compile it should then show here on the bottom that it did successfully compiled because I didn't change anything or you can click on upload here on the other arrow then it will upload the file via the ST link if you have it connected which I can only just yeah say to do so it's just more secure than if you change something in the firmware and you brick your watch yeah when the compiling is done you can see for once the size of the files and it will also create a new zip file here inside the d6 arduino that file is now a dfu update file you can copy it to your phone and select it to flash to the watch via the da flasher app so you simply um, open the da flasher select your watch bring it into bootloader mode and flash that file and then you have the new arduino firmware on it another th thing is the symbols I took one from the remixicon.com library. You can simply click on one, select the correct size you want, for example 72 pixels, download it as a PNG file, go to this site where you can then upload this symbol. It will interpret the file of it you can make it Arduino code, rename already your symbol. I will name it symbol hospital. And you also need to select two bytes per pixel where you can then generate your code. Here you have your new symbol. You can select all and copy that. Go into the Arduino code and into the file images where we already have all the symbols here and we then can simply add the new symbol here and you can use it now you can use the symbol hospital in the menu file here to put it here for example that simple you can add new new menus or new menu icons these can of course also be colored one as in the animation demo you saw so even that is done pretty quickly if you understood the system okay that is already for the p8 smartwatch Arduino upload manual. Please uh, also take a look at the D6 notification app. You can also get it from the Play Store. This will help you to get the notifications from your phone to the watch. 
and also you can set the time with it and some other stuff. Have a great day.